Hello there. What if I told you Wakanda was real? What if I told you the real Wakanda that everybody watched and the movies, I mean the science fiction movie was real. Because every, everybody thought it was just a myth, it was just a story that was just organized and just for fun and for entertainment. But it was actually real. The real Wakanda was inside the lost city of Benin in a Doe state, Nigeria, which was formerly known as Igudomigudo. This is a story of the real Wakanda inside the lost city of Benin. The capital of Africa's Benin Empire astonished Europeans with its beauty. So why is there nothing left? Big question, right? Don't worry, we'll get to it. The Great Benin, where the king resides, is larger than Lisbon. What? wrote Portuguese ship captain Lorenzo Pinto in 1691. He added, the houses are large, especially that of the king, which is richly decorated and has fine columns. The city is wealthy and is industrious. It is so well governed that theft is unknown. And the people live in such security that they have no doors to their houses. What? Located in the depth of the jungle, but connected to other African kingdoms and the Atlantic Ocean by the Niger River. Great Benin City was the imperial capital of the empire that at its peak stretched from Lagos in the west to beyond the Niger in the east, an area that equates to approximately one-fifth of modern-day Nigeria. Benin made contact with Europeans in the 1480s. Dutch merchants arrived 100 years later and over next 200 years. Most traders came from England, France, Germany and Spain. They all returned home with amazing stories. But today, if you mention the Benin Empire to a Westerner, even someone from Portugal, which maintained regular contact with the kingdom for 400 years, they are likely to stare at you blankly. So what happened to the great city of Benin and why did it disappear without any trace? According to the oral history of the Edo people, Benin was originally called Igodo Migodo, named after Igodo, founder of the Ogiso, meaning rulers of the sky. Between the late 18th century and the 15th century, Benin's empire grew sporadically under the expansionist war of conquering kings. The fascination of the formidability of the empire are built around various historical artifacts such as the impressive range of artworks, the advanced trading networks and the military strategies by which the warrior kings expanded and defended the Benin. Benin had a large army of well-trained and disciplined soldiers and the king was the supreme ruling authority over them. Obaiwari the first who reigned between about 1440 and 1473 is largely credited with the transformation of the kingdom into a modern state structure. He reorganized the political structure through reforms that minimized the uneasy relationship between the Oba and the chiefs and it enabled him to monopolize military power with the later factor being responsible for his imperialist expansion. He is also noted for prompting acts and artifact production, 
namely the bronze casting, ivory wood that Benin would be known for around the world today. The craftsmen produce a distinct style that includes heads, figurines, brass plaques, and other items of royal domains. Artistry was used to celebrate royal omnipotence and to legitimize the king's power and glory, as the Oba was believed to embody the country and its continuity art was used to communicate his divinity and possibly to also subjectify his people who really saw or had access to him as he was believed to be in divine being obaiwari was also associated with architectural innovation city planning grand festivals and the introduction of royal beads he built on the effort of Oba Ogwala and completed the first and second moats, a network of ramparts that walled the city against Estana aggressors. The moat was an impressive part of the national defense, covering roughly 16,000 kilometers and enclosing 6,500 square kilometers of community land. It was built over the course of six centuries and it was a work of pre-mechanical engineering marvel. In 1974, the Guinness Book of World Record described the Bini Moat as the largest earthwork in the world prior to the mechanical inventions and it is considered to be the largest man-made invention second only the Great Wall of China. Oba Ogwala was also believed to be the one who first sent his craftsman Iguanhe to Ife to learn the art of bronze casting. The Portuguese explorers made contact with Benin in the 15th century and they quickly started trading. The relationship between Portugal and Benin was so cordial that Oba Esiki was said to have sent ambassadors to Portugal. Esigi was reputed to have been literate in Portuguese, and this boosted the interaction with the Portuguese traders. Meanwhile, the initial Portuguese missionary effort yielded some fruits. Trade continued between Portugal and Benin, with items including ivory, pepper, and the limited supply of slaves. During the period, there wasn't really a major drive for the slave trade because it was mainly women who were sold into the serfdom in Benin. Those who were enslaved either because they were captured in war or forced to pay off their debts with hard labor were arguably held more for a royal court prestige than actual economic proceeds. Trade in slavery was therefore marginal, as enslaved men were more useful to boost Benin military than to just be sold for mere gifts. Benin was enjoying such an economical and military high that they didn't need the proceed from an Atlantic slave trade. It's also worth noting that Benin relationship with the Europeans went beyond trading goods to warfare machinery services. But by the 17th century, the kingdom had begun to decline as a result of lack of leadership, internal fractures and indiscipline among members of the ruling class. When the slave trade was abolished and the price of ivory fell, it hit Benin hard in the mid 18th century. The empire got boost under Oba Erosoyen, but it was not to last. The kingdom started to shrink as former territories began to move away from the old empire towards the British boat for trade and protection. In the mid 19th century, Benin began to trade in palm oil, and as the product became more important to the British, they sought to make Benin a protectorate. The Oba took refuge in isolationism and since Benin's political power had declined, the king took to making human sacrifice 
to reignite its sacral authority in 1892, Vice Consul H.L. Galway pushed Oba Vorame to sign his now diminished empire to the British as a protectorate. There was some doubt about whether the Oba indeed signed the treaty as he has ensured if the British had good intentions. By making Benin a British protectorate, the treaty would have facilitated commerce, ceased slave trading, and ended human sacrifice. During one visit by the Dutch explorer Olfer Dapper, who visited Benin City, soon after the completion of his defensive fortification, he wrote, When you go in, you enter a great broad street, which is not paved and seems to be seven or eight times wider than one street in Amsterdam. This street is straight and does not bend at any point. It is thought to be four miles long. And the gate where I went in on horseback, there was a very big wall, very thick and made of earth with a very deep and broad ditch outside it. And outside this gate, there is also a big suburb. Inside the gates and along the great street I just mentioned, you see many other great streets on either side, and these are also straight and do not bend. The houses in this town are in good order, one place evenly closed with its neighbor. Just as the places in Holland stand, he was amazed with what he saw and when he went back he told the great story to his people hmm. here comes the bad part but sadly the grandeur and much of the history beneath city head for a dull region was lost when the British states culture these claims are heavily criticized as simply fictions for the clergy due to the influence of the Oba Ewari 11th, Oba of Benin and the first Oba of the Benin Empire. So you see guys, the movie Wakanda got its origin from Nigeria, a dual state Benin city to be more precise, which was formerly called Igodomigodo. So that's it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Until next time.